Last but not least, speaker, Nandan Banerjee of Vodafone to share his thoughts with us, please. Hi, very good afternoon. What's up? Good afternoon, sir. Can I hear a louder? Good afternoon. Um, well, that was real reality bites. Um, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be very difficult for me to keep pace with the August set of uh, panelists which we had here. Um, but more than that, it's indeed a pleasure to be invited to address the leaders of tomorrow's business. And it's even more a pleasure to come and address, I'm sure, um, a large number of Vodafone's customers. <laughs> if not as yet Vodafone's customers, then by the end of this presentation, future customers. If I would have asked some of you to pick up, uh, raise your hands and say how many of you are Vodafone, have a Vodafone connection, um, quite a few hands would go up. And I'm also sure the next time when an Airtel guy comes in and says, how many of you have a party at your connection? A lot of hands go up as well, but that's okay. You can keep double cents. <laughs> um, it's important for us to uh, understand the context in which uh, Vodafone is operating today in India. Uh, we were primarily, we were Hutch, and before that, Usha Martin out here in Calcutta. And it's been a 10 to 15 year or long journey. Uh, we moved from Usha Martin to, from Command to Hutch, and Hutchison Bangkua is uh, a company which is based out of Hong Kong. Um, and thereafter, Vodafone acquired Hutchison Sar in 2007. And that's another phase of rapid change. So, as I go on, we will talk of how we manage change, or what is it that is a dilemma with us, and how are we going about it, and what role does HR really play? in managing change, understand the business a little, and of course, talent, priorities, talent management, unique systems. What are we doing on PMS? What are we doing on engagement surveys? And of course, health and safety, and diversity and inclusivity. But these all look very you know, serious jargon, so we'll go on and we'll chat up as we go on. Um, if we really go on uh, to managing change, and uh, if one was to understand the context in which change occurs in any organization, uh, if you plot it on a matrix of time and business performance, when we talk of change, we are actually saying that from the current state in which we are operating, we want to change because we want to become better. So that's our aspired state. And closing this gap is what change is all about. So when business leaders really look at change and say, oh, we, want, we want to change the way we work. The question is, as HR leaders, and if you are, some of you are going to get into HR leadership positions, remember this, and if a lot of you are going to do just business, you must remember this too. That as you progress on the journey of change, um, from your current state, as you start off and say, okay, these are the things we do. These are the things we need to do because we need to get better in the business. After a point, you will find this sharp tip. And then it plateaus and then it goes. Any, any change process, be it in your family, be it at an educational institution, be it in any organization, be it in society, when you go on to the path of change, you face this little bit of a crisis. And we call it the value of despair. We call it the value of despair because people start despair. They start thinking, oh, I've got into this change. A CEO says, oh, I've pushed this organization into change. And I've said, I promised the moon. But what's happening? We are sort of dipping a little and blacking it out. But that's something which is bound to happen. Because there is a conflict of interest conflict of practice, conflict of thought. And it's important to manage this. As leaders of tomorrow and as HR leaders of tomorrow, it's important to educate oneself and the business 
सिंगली स्टार्ट ऑफ